Squiz Kids acknowledges the traditional owners of the lands on which we podcast, the Turrbal and Combermary people. Good morning and welcome to the Squiz Kids Olympic Sprint, your quick as a flash update on the Olympic highlights that happened in Paris overnight while you were sleeping. It's Monday, July 29. I'm Bryce Corbett. You ready to race through it? On your marks, get set, go! Aussie paddler Jess Fox added to Australia's early Olympic gold medal haul this morning, winning the women's kayak event. Woohoo! Despite qualifying in eighth in the semis, she turned in a champion's performance on the white water in Paris to take the top spot on the podium. And get this, she is now the winningest athlete in paddle sports in the history of the Olympics. And she still has two more events to come. And yes, for the purposes of this podcast, winningest is most definitely a word. The Matildas kept the country on the edge of their seats and their Olympic hopes alive with a come from behind win against Zambia this morning. After conceding their first goal in the 42nd second and at one stage being 3-0 down, the Tillies nevertheless clawed their way back into medal contention, winning by six goals to five. Veteran striker Michelle Heyman, brought into the team to plug a Sam Kerr-sized hole, sealed the deal for the Aussies in the 90th minute of the game, sending a shot just past the keeper's left glove and into the net. It was disappointment at the skate park for Australia's Chloe Cavell last night. Despite going into competition with the hope of becoming Australia's youngest ever gold medalist, Chloe crashed out, coming eighth in her skateboarding event. But with her dad proudly cheering on from the sidelines, she still did her country proud. And back in the pool, tomorrow's gold medal final of the women's 200 meter freestyle final is shaping up to be a doozy after Aussie teammates and rivals Molly O'Callaghan and Ariane Titmus both qualified this morning, with Arnie just pipping Molly at the post in the semi-final. May the best swimmer win. And so to the medal tally. After two days of competition, Australia is on top with an amazing four gold medals, followed by host country France with three gold medals and with Japan and South Korea nipping at their heels in equal third position. China and the USA are in fifth and sixth positions respectively. And that's the Olympic sprint for today. Now it's time for today's Squiz Kids Daily News Podcast. Squiz Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh. Hello and welcome to Squiz Kids Today, your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. I'm Bryce Corbett. It's Monday, July 29. In Squiz Kids Today, inspiring Aussies in Paris, wildfires in Canada, Zero Gravity Olympics in space and the cows terrorising Tassie. That's what's making news, kids style. The Lowdown It's only day two of the Paris Olympics and already there have been so many stories of inspiration. And if the Olympics and Paralympics are going to teach us anything over the next month, it's that humans really are remarkable and that when we put our minds to things and put in the effort, there's really no limit to what we can achieve. And there were two stories over the weekend that were an Olympic inspirational standout. The first being our gold medal winning swimmer Meg Harris. The 22-year-old was a member of the Australian women's 4 by 100 meter relay team who won the event for a remarkable fourth Olympics in a row. As well as being an incredible athlete and teammate, Meg has a hearing impairment, which means she only has partial hearing in both ears. It's a hearing impairment she's had since she was a child, but she has never let it stop her chasing her dreams. She's learned to listen extra carefully for the whistle to get up on the starting block, and of course for the starter's gun. And as we saw on Saturday night, it's a disability that hasn't held her back. Squeeze Kids salutes you, Meg. Meanwhile, over on the hockey pitch, Aussie Matt Dawson has taken the concept of dedication to his sport to new heights. The Hockey Roo, which is the name given to our men's hockey team, suffered a finger injury during training two weeks ago. 
Now, his doctors said it would take four to six months to properly recover, but he didn't want to miss the Olympics, so he made the decision to have the top part of his finger amputated, which is a fancy word for medically chopped off. Now, that's what I call a team player, though I must stress this is not something that you should try at home. Matt and his teammates beat Argentina on the weekend in their opening game at the Olympics and will play Ireland later today. Good luck, hockey roos. What's in the box? That was the question on everyone's lips this weekend during medal presentations at the Olympics as athletes took to the podium in Paris. As well as bowing to receive their medals, athletes were handed a long rectangular box as a Paris Olympic souvenir. Inside the box is what's called a Paris Iconics poster, a limited edition poster commemorating the Paris Olympics, an illustration hand-drawn by a famous artist, and it's a drawing which looks a little bit like a Where's Wally picture showing the entire Paris Olympic scene. I've stuck a link to it in today's episode notes so you can take a look for yourselves. So, now you know. You're welcome. Spin the globe. Each day we give the world globe a spin and find a new story from wherever it stops. And today we've landed in... Canada, where wildfires have devastated a popular tourist town. And also, we've landed in California just to the south, where wildfires there have also forced the evacuation of hundreds of people from their homes. As you know, when we have winter down here in the southern hemisphere, our northern hemisphere cousins have summer. And high temperatures and dry conditions there have led to some of the worst bushfires that Western Canada and the west coast of the USA have seen for many years. In Jasper, a popular tourist town in Canada's famous Rocky Mountains, some 300 buildings were destroyed as thousands were forced to flee the flames. Meanwhile, in California, residents who were forced to evacuate their homes because of bushfire six years ago are going through the same exhausting process all over again. Sending all of our best Squiz Kids wishes to everyone involved. Spaced out. Seems that Olympics fever is not just restricted to everyone down here on planet Earth. Astronauts living and working on the International Space Station have also been getting into the Olympic spirit, staging their very own zero-gravity version of the Games 400 kilometres above our heads. The space station is in what's called permanent orbit above the Earth. That's a fancy way of saying that it spins in a permanent loop high above the Earth, just outside the stratosphere. At any given moment, there are up to seven astronauts living and working up there, conducting experiments in what is essentially a great big science lab in the sky. I know, crazy, right? And this weekend, the residents of the space station, inspired by events down here on Earth, staged their very own version of the Olympics, with a sprint, a discus throw, and even weightlifting done inside the space station's zero-gravity environment. Zero gravity means that you can float about without pesky gravity keeping your feet or any other solid object on the ground, which makes weightlifting an absolute cinch. I've stuck a link to video of astronauts weightlifting one another in zero gravity in today's episode notes. Animal Kingdom If you go down to Tasmania today, you better not go alone. And that's because feral cows are on the loose and running amok. Yes, you heard right, feral cows. A feral cow is a cow that has escaped into the wild and it doesn't much care for fences or rules or eating the grass in someone else's paddock. And the township of Labrina near Launceston currently has a feral cow problem, with a herd of about 30 wandering about at night, causing car and tractor accidents on the roads and knocking down pretty much every fence they come across. Nobody seems to know who the cows belong to or how they came to be in the wild, or why they're constantly on the move. Ah, yes, the dad joke alarm. Cut me some slack. It's a Monday after all. 
time for the quiz. This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one. What is the name of the famous mountains in Canada where wildfires are burning? Well done if you said the Rocky Mountains, or the Rockies for short. Question number two. What's the name of the great big science lab in orbit above planet Earth? Did you say the International Space Station? Well done to you. Question number three. A herd of what sort of animals is roaming free in a town in Tasmania, terrorising the locals? Yes, of course, it's a herd of cows. Shout outs. It's Monday, July 29. Today is International Tiger Day. A day to celebrate this most magnificent of creatures and focus on efforts to protect and conserve them. I've stuck a link in the episode notes to a website showing how you can get involved. It's also a special day for these Squiz Kids celebrating a birthday today and tomorrow. Manveer from Mount Gravatt, Macy from Yass, Haven from West Albury, Heidi from Ballarat, Dolev from Chatswood, Basil from Adelaide, Tristan from Cannon Hill, and Mozwa from North Parramatta. And belated birthday shout-outs today go to Ariane from North Ryde, Albie from Maiden Gully, Juliet from Perth, Zoe from Davidson, Camden from Wandawi, Felix from Brisbane, Lucy from Adelaide, and Gina from Deer Park. And today's classroom shout-outs go to Class 5H and Miss Gertz at Banyan Fields Primary School, to Year 4 with Mr Marnie at St Joseph's Primary School in Dungog, to Class 4 5M and Mr Fleming at Sutherland North Public School, to Class 1S and Mrs Sheel at Walls End South Public School, to Class 5 6F and Miss Freshwater at Plumpton Public School, and to Class 2 3 with Miss Mel at Magpie Primary School in Ballarat. Now, don't forget, if you've got a birthday coming up and you want a shout-out, or if you're after a classroom shout-out, drop us a line at squizkids at thesquiz.com.au or fill out the form on our website. Well, friends, that's all we have time for. Thanks for listening to Squiz Kids today. We'll be back again tomorrow with our special Squiz Kids shortcut to the modern Olympics. A 10-minute deep dive on the history and origins of the great big event you see playing out in Paris right now. And don't forget, every morning of the Olympics, we'll be bringing you the Squiz Kids Olympic Sprint. A quick catch up on what's been happening in Paris while you've been asleep. Just subscribe to Squiz Kids in your favourite podcasting app and you won't miss a thing. In the meantime, get out there and have a most excellent day. Over and out. <laughs>